And welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to Adventures into Reality. I am Andrew Bartzis. Today I am joined by Ms. Kathy Ma, my intrepid forever co-host. Welcome to the show, Kathy Ma. Thank you so much. It's great to be here yet again and welcome back after your little out of on location sojourn. <laughs> Sojourn into fishing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, tell us. How many did you catch? <laughs> uh, not enough that were keepers. They were all the, the small little ones, and they went back into the water. But it was the joy of being out there then, and the reconnecting of that energy, the clearing out of the old, the accepting of the present, and the creating with the new. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the one thing about fishing is that you really connect with nature, Mother Earth, one-on-one, -on -one, and you're in those still moments. I mean, of course, you have the intermittent super excitement of the bites. In yeah. fact, the actual catching doesn't matter. It's the excitement of the bite. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's the excitement of the bite. And this this was one of those scenarios where all the little fish were just biting, and it was it was just I let them take the bait, and it was the enjoyment of being there. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. That enjoyment. Mm. You know, Kathy, we had a really, really amazing show yesterday on Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. Hint, hint, wink, wink. At 6 to 8, six to eight Eastern time on Revolution Radio, we did our show, Charting the Course. Mm. And we did a special show yesterday about the fears, the in general, in generality of how fear affects us, what, what it comes from. And it was so powerful. I want to recap some of the stuff we talked about it. Mm. Yes, it was very powerful. I will just interject and say it was Studio B, everyone. Sunday Studio B. <laughs> <laughs> we are learning this marketing thing. <laughs> I know. We're not super good at it yet, but we're getting better. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, it was a really, really great show. And to be able to talk about fear, what it means for people, what kind of fears that we have, fears or phobias, how they can affect us, whether we're... Um, Older, younger, kid, adult, um, even in the womb, uh, yep. everything, everything. And how you can even go back into past lives and to better understand how to cope with it all right. and move forward. I think one of the coolest things we came up with when was when we were talking about our fear body. When we've gone through so much fear and when our regular process of cyclical paranoia that we all refine within ourselves. Um, creates a body of pain and a body of fear and the letting go of that and how debt was really related to that fear body. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was, uh, in fact, we hadn't really discussed that aspect of it until we started talking. <laughs> exactly. Uh, prior to the show. But, you know, it really is such a big thing with debt, especially credit card debt these days. I mean, there is so much fear associated with it because, you know, you keep getting further and further down that little rabbit hole and one day you wake up you look at this statement and you're like oh <laughs> i don't have enough children to see to give <laughs> or you have to get rid of a child i mean in, in <laughs> days past that was the choice yeah yeah but i mean the, the fear that's associated with that is just enormous it really is enormous and it just permeates throughout your consciousness all day all night 24 7 right. it's very very difficult to let go of and one of the big things we also discussed was we have such trouble sharing that issue with people from you know the guilt the shame um and as you always say the shame blame guilt that's associated with things like this and how it's really okay to be able to talk about it with people and get support from others because when you're on your own with this kind of fear and and that hang over your head it's a very scary place to be and especially if you feel like you're all alone and alienated and can't share um some of those um deep, ooh, I don't even know if fear is the right word, but that, ooh, yep. <laughs> that energy. Hello? Yep. Well, you have to mute for just a second. We're still going on there. So that, that energy that, that comes forth in those fear moments was what drives people in inertia or impatience or inaction. Mm, yes, very much so. And when you're in that inertia, it's just such a horrible place to be because you don't know what to do. You feel such a sense of hopelessness and really can't even ground yourself wow. properly to work out yeah, where you want to go. Okay, callers. Uh, Keanu and Nisa, can you please both mute? Because uh, we're still talking. Thank you. Uh, 
um, yeah, so when you, when you're in that place, it, it, you really need to be able to reach out. You know, whether you feel you cannot reach out to someone that you know or a family member, then you need to reach out to someone because to be living in that fear and stuck in that inertia, there is no resolution. You need to take steps to move forward and to find out where you want to go. So, of course, we always go back to the grounding. When you are more grounded, then you can see the situation more clearly and think about your next best steps. And those next best steps are what so many people in fear lose sight of. Oh, yes. yes. That was the, the other side of how debt subtly takes away our future life. How, you know, kids in, in with credit card debt, you know, graduating college with a half million dollars in debt, they're never going to be able to pay that off. Mm. And all of those things that came with that, you know, it was such a powerful show. I really encourage people to go and listen to it on the YouTube channel, Galactic Historian, or head to the website and sign up and subscribe there. And you'll be able to have access to a lot of other shows that are giving you tools, tips, and techniques and dealing with fear, debt, and all those other things that are out there. Mm. Oh, yeah. I mean, if only we had known these techniques when we were younger. <laughs> oh, yeah. Some help. <laughs> you know, it's taken both you and I a lifetime to synthesize through all the readings and all the public speaking we've done. And this synthesis process for both of us has refined, refined our one degree of separation, everyone we've met, the common goals and heartbreaks that they have. And we've, we've taken this synthesis and prof professionalized it into a skill a skill that is now represented in taking callers and having people ask us some of the more difficult questions where we use our individuated skill with our life process to go into that neutrality and bring forth some form of wisdom one can interpret or allow within themselves or not allow within themselves. Mm, yes. There's so much fear to the future. And we want to dispel fear. That's one of the main purposes of both Kathy and myself is dispelling the fear. Yes, dispel the fear. And it is a spell, a spell we create on ourselves or take from the system. Mm. Yeah, and it's one of those things that really, if nothing else, if you listen to this kind of thing, you know you're not alone. You're not, you know you're not the only one. And it, it, even that in itself is comforting because right. you do feel so alienated when you're in this position. Yes. So, Kathy, we're going to move to our first caller, Janice, who got cut off from last week. Janice, are you there? I am here. I'm How so glad to be here with you both. Thank Hello, Kathy. Hello, Andrew. How you doing today? I'm doing great. I feel like I've been preparing to talk to you guys for the last couple of weeks. So what kind of questions do you want to start with? I would love to hear my galactic history from you as a start. That's been something that has a bit's been calling to me um, for some time. I talked with you guys in May. Um, yes, and you had some, some injuries that were going on there too, right? Yeah, and I, I, I can tell you all about that too. I can update you on that. So how, how have things gone since? The, have you, have you been able to work on them, have cranial sacral? Um, what was the last part? Were you, you able said? to have any cranial sacral therapy? I'm about, I'm going to have cranial sacral tomorrow. Um, but I've had, um, distance cranial sacral and I've had, um, something called emotional repolarization technique on it. And I connected with, uh, my new primary care physician, which is, He's a young osteopathic doctor, and that comes out of the cranial sacral, you know, cranial sacral comes out of osteopathy. Um, and he, act, he and I actually did like a spiritual revocation. He prayed with me in the um, meeting with, you know, in the practice, in, in the actual doctor's appointment, because he does hands-on healing. And they sounded so much like the spiritual contract revocations that you do, they were almost essentially the same thing with a slight different orientation. It was really powerful. So that was that synchronicity that, that reminded yes. you that, that everything was working within you. Yes, beautiful. Yeah. How beautiful. did you change afterwards? And, I, and I've had two meetings with a podiatrist, which is like a whole more conventional approach. 
and x-rays and all sorts of things. So it's been a really amazing journey. So thank Moment you. Of your your yeah. time of revelation where you no longer have to live with the pain and you can, you can go ahead and take care of it on your own. Yes. Yes. So what, what do you want to and start I've with? The walking, and I've been walking barefoot and in the mornings, which feels like a very profound way to ground that foot and release whatever's ready to be released and singing my light language. And it's been really amazing. So thank you. Thank, thank okay, you. So let's start with galactic history. Great. So thank you. What year were you born? 1961. 1961. Just let me tune in here a second. So I'm going to do my usual, I'm going to track you back from your last lifetime. So there's, there's a, and more of an advanced story. So 1941, 1940, 1939. So 1939 to 1941, you are living in the astral world, going between Akshutotolo, which is a, an astral city in, we'll just call it the Northern Hemisphere over Russia. It's a light city that can be visible in rainbows, etc. And you can transfer to a hollow earth. Earth city called Istanbul. Hmm. Yes. So you're leading two lives, and you are an ambassador to the ancestors of the past who are in extinction, and to the ancestors living on the surface battling in World War II. There are certain ancestors on the surface, if they die, they create an extinction process. So you have stepped in to act as a mediary. So if something dies in World War II that's not supposed to die, it doesn't go into hollow earth extinction. And then any future beings and incarnations who are in the astral world wouldn't be able to get to live. So you are acting as a mediary to the underworld to make sure that certain souls are not lost or victimized in the worst way. And this is reflective of, of thousands of lifetimes where you acted as the shamanic intermediary. Um, and this 1939 to 1941 was the culmination of a 3,000-year plan in which you did very similar things, whether it was living in Italy and teaching specific people how to cross the barrier of the Great Forgetting and the, and the birth canal so that they could wake up in the next lifetime in the same lineage, or if it was teaching shamanic spirit walking in the dreamlands of, of, Aus of Australia, not necessarily to indigenous people, but off-world indigenous people, people who have left this, who were born on this world and went and lived a thousand years on another world and came back, try to reconnect to this world. You would be that intermediary reconnector to the grounds and services to them. Other examples is when you were a ship creator, um, like building wooden ships to go across the ocean. You would create super magical vehicles that had massive energies put within them. And then mm -hmm. those sh other esoteric practitioners would then adorn the vehicle with energetic objects and it could essentially psychically teleport from port to port to port to port. These are the types of things your soul's been doing. So this leads back to why this frequency is in imprinted within you and it represents you as a founder being who found yourself as a founder being, meaning you found yourself and I am being, although it was roughly sixth density at about 3 billion, 200 million years ago, and the vast openness of the universe, life that you knew it was very far away, but you had decided to go to the very edge of the void of nothingness, still on the edge of the reality, and build a planet. But you weren't going to inhabit this planet in any way, shape, or form. You were going to build your virtual spirit jungle in which you were going to create other versions of yourself and live within your own bubble of reality. This created the founding of the self. Eventually, your light that was created at this edge of the universe became very bright, and the universe itself expanded. And beings came and found your individuated expression and began exchanging frequencies of light with you. And this is where the next layer of founder being within you decided that the Maya you had been living in was now complete. And you took that Mayic vision returned to some of source area frequency consciousness and began sharing your Maya dream experience as an individuated colored being in the midst of nowhere. And you began seeding races on worlds that were super young and would watch them for billions of years. And then your eyes settled on earth and you realized that that was the cooking pot that even brought into creation what you could even be. You recognized it as the galactic seed planet that existed in universal dream space before the universe came into existence. 
and you assembled your parts, and you traveled to this planet, and you lived in the bears, the dolphins, the whales, the tigers, the cats, the humans, the four-leggeds, the giants, the winged, the birds, the Anunnaki, and everything in between, because you had solarized your frequency to be living on the surface of this world. Does this help? Sorry, it's a little choppy. Uh, are you there? I'm here. I'm here. Oh, so, okay, okay. I'm, I'm so just, you asked. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. So, does it any parts or questions that you want to ask on that? Uh, the um, uh, every thank you so much. Um, it it rings so so true to me. I already could feel that connection with Hollow Earth and bringing you know t- caretaking spirits and souls. You know, as you talked about and. Um, the the line was super choppy though, so um, I'm a f- I'm sensing that I'll really get a profound download when I listen to the recording again. So um, uh, yes, I guess part of uh, will you talk a little bit more about the kind of task that you are speaking of? You know um, that I'm engaged in that I have been engaged in and what part of that is still continuing today in this reality, so to speak. Um, and is there a connection with my actual blood relatives, you know, my ancestors of this lifetime, um, with any of that, um, specifically or yeah, you, you are a founding earth bloodline, you as a soul, Yes. I, 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 when you go back and listen, you'll hear me use the word founder. Not yeah, I the, did hear that. That not, really, not in that, the modern mm-hmm. colloquial sense of what conspiracy world, world says are founder beings. And I said founder, I mean, you founding a lineage and invited millions of others to come and live, live within a tube frequency of light that was protected. No, beautiful. So. I heard you speak to another founder per, um, energy on a call and I was totally resonating feeling like, yes. <laughs> so the being that is you is the one that created this protected tube of co-creation. So a being can go through a source uniting frequency and come out on the other end still alive and still capable of functioning. Mm-hmm. So you created a tube so that you can invite a soul family into that could be protected. You were one that created the tube along with a few thousand others who created the original lineages. And then you went inside the tube, and all of mm. your other pieces, parts, went inside the tube also, and were seeded throughout time. Mm. So that yeah. you had a stream of consciousness that ultimately created the Janus of today, whose ultimate expression is, is it time to close down the tube and create right. a new one? If so, what are the protocols I must go through so that I can recall all of my individuated parts who are spread around the multiverse like an accordion? Right. Right. You ever heard the word recapitulation? Yeah, totally. That that makes sense to me. I've been in, involved in numerous actual healing modalities that actually allow for a kind of a recapitulation. Yes. And this is a, 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 a very powerful ceremonial word you can begin to use for yourself because mm-hmm. you don't need to know where every soul part is. Okay, it would be great. too much for you to even begin yeah. to understand. Yeah, you, yeah. Are, you honestly don't even need to know what the majority of them are doing. You need to know if they're in polarity or neutrality with you. Mm-hmm. And those that are in true neutrality they will come to you in a form of density. The highest density is first and the lowest density is last. And this is where you, this Janus of the now, has to be willing to step forward in your authentic, pure, no-time self and begin to create an agenda of communication. That okay. has actual dates on your calendar. Okay. Because when they start creating ancestral transmission points, they are updating you of how to be in alignment frequency for a, let's say, a fifth density soul shard that can't fit into your body. It'll be like splitting, you know, genes if you were you're, you're just too small. 
<laughs> totally. <laughs> <laughs> so they got to figure out another way to get you in, get it into the body, which will be yeah. through the crown chakra. Okay. So practicing yes. crown chakra advancing techniques. You may even want to consider finding a tall room and put a little pulley on the top there and attach a crystal to the pulley and you'd be sitting in lo lotus form and pull the crystal up and down so you can begin to tell how tall your crown chakra is. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. okay. So what other yeah. kind of questions do you want to ask? Well, how about if we talk about the dream time because I've been really cultivating that since we since I've been listening to you as well as since we talked and um, there seems to be a, a, it seems to be a kind of a visitation place. Like I feel like I'm actually connecting with these, you know, multiple different soul shards and there's actually a whole layer or strata. I feel of something like sh the shame, blame and guilt that's like interfering with the dream time and it's um and I often wake up with this very profound emotional state that um I sense is part of something that I'm maybe it's the recapitulation you're talking about but maybe it's it's something I feel like I have to tend to in my morning practice and um somehow resolve might be the right word but um and uh, the other morning, I actually, it was kind of a victory, so I was definitely celebrated it, like you mm -hmm. speak of, you know, um, really, I've been reviewing many of my victories that are both averted disasters as well as beautiful soul victories of some mm -hmm. of creative victories. Um, and um, I found in this, just on Saturday, I was somehow more lucid and was able to confront, not confront, but to engage a being in the dream time that was, uh, seemed like a portal or something an, um, uh, to my own uh, destiny or something. And uh, he was like, um, not ignoring me, but he was like blatantly saying I wasn't you know, affiliated with him or something like that. But I, you know, continued to affirm what I knew within myself and got through. And then I actually started doing this drumming uh, practice that he was involved in. And, um, and, and I had a kind of a profound uh, experience of my dreaming body waking up in this trance and literally I woke up and I was singing and I was singing with my waking voice. It was, you know, it was yeah. felt like that's, a, that's an called, amazing victory. Yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's spiritual shamanic transference. That is why they, they do the practice of the talking drum. Oh, beautiful. And there are drummers that can travel through time. Got it. And you began to have one of those experiences that you've had thousands of other lifetimes which was very recognized innately in the soul when you began drumming and trying to connect and re began reaffirming your truth source. And you were able to get through the, the, the white static reality of denial that's everywhere else in this world and connect to the authentic truth. And by doing that, your dreaming body and your I am presence became the, in that infinite non-time moment, the super technology of communion and union. All right, that is our break. Hold on, Janice, and when we come back, I will talk more about the talking show. Great, thanks. And welcome back, everyone. We were just talking about the talking drum with our caller, Janice. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Yes. So mm -hmm. what do you know about the talking drum? Well, I've seen it. Um, played and performed and I know that it's a spirit um, kind of conduit I would say um, it, uh, that's a, probably what I can say about it yeah well, and a, and I have a, I've had a very strong dream and connection with Africa I don't know if that's one of its origins but the talking drum is a Native American myth that is in many different traditions and it speaks about a prophecy of the ancient times when the first world of the ice world first came and was um, 
maiming and, and harming many of the animals. And that was a time where humanity had to take the, the, the elk meat and stuff like that and become meat eaters and go through a great consciousness change. With that became the art of drumming and tanning of hides. And they discovered that within the drum beats was an almost imperceptible commonality between one clan's drumming and another clan's drumming. Mm. And when the clans came together in the second world, the prophecy of the talking drum and the heartbeat of Earth Mother was, was created that said within the drum beat is this connection to the great heartbeat of the Earth, which is playing in unison with us on different dimensions, galaxies, and time streams. And that shamans who use the prophecy of the talking drum by speaking to their many view future and path cells through drum beats can pass the barriers of time into no time and have alchemical, shamanic moments of great unity. Mm. Yeah. yeah, That's Beautiful. one of our first teachings as a human species of how to get out of the ignorance of the Maya of this world into the reality of the dream world that we are simultaneously living in. You should right. begin to create practices that have you physically dreaming, drumming, and drumming in the physicality so that you can begin to master that moment where your dreaming body is coming back to you and you are matching drum beats. Right. Until yeah. you are playing the drum with yourself and you can create a chorus of yourself drummers because within your mind, you know the rhythm and the beat. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. You can create that into a syncopated, mystical experience of revelation. Right. So yeah. what are, what, do you have any questions about the talking drum? Well, it sounds to me like it's much more um, ancient than what I've, any references that I had. And, and um, I've actually worked, I've owned many drums because I've been drawn to them, but I've actually don't have any actual physical drums right now in my, my life, um, uh, hold, you know, my possessions, so to speak. Um, but uh, Do you it, have a cell phone? It, do I have what? A cell phone or a smart a smartphone that's oh, a cell totally, phone. yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Download a drum app and you have a drum. Okay, great. Literally, yeah. download it. It should be two yeah. bucks. Totally. Okay, <clears throat> I was <laughs> thinking of getting these electric uh, drumsticks. You know that are like drum samples, sam like you can hit, hit surfaces and drum. But I don't know if that would be. Um, I'd much rather have the. <laughs> the real thing. And I'm actually, do, I, I have a background of, in woodworking. So the, that was, I was totally tuning into what you felt about the yeah. ship. I mean, what you sensed about the ships and the shipbuilding and the wood, but you could build your own. There are yes. kits out there that, you know, with yep. a woodworker like you, you could put together a masterpiece. Yeah. So it's like a frame drum, yep. um, essentially is, or do, or do you see a specific form or, or a uh, kind of drum, in I see a, a variety of a variety. Oh, okay. of, it all yeah. depends on on what tonality you're going for, because you can get something that's like what's called a singing drum, which is very sure. it's like a ring that's very big and wide, and then when you sing into it, the hide reverberates from the inside. Yeah. So, yeah. and then you have to be you know hide specific in your creation if you're going to be going with you know something that's you know like lambskin or deer or, or whatever is going to be the medicine that's in there. Right. Right. <sighs> bear and is the toughest what, to work with. Bear? Mm -hmm. Bear is the toughest. And I would not use a bearskin drum for that unless it's a smaller drum. Okay. And uh, this practice way of working with it in my uh, practice, in my, you know, do I do this um, in by myself with, I mean, out in, you know, the sacred environments or with other people as well. Um, yes, and yeah. more. And um, uh, the, the specific message for you is to begin to push the envelope with what you perceive is drumming and not creating projections at you that you're being too loud or right. something is listening that isn't, isn't, doesn't like it. Be willing yeah. to go and drum in a thunderstorm. Perfect. No, I, I love, I live in the Taos area and we have these amazing thunderstorms and I've already 
been talking and singing to the thunder beings, you know, well, like actually yesterday on my walk and what you that, can do, what you mm -hmm. can do, you're asking about other people is you can put a, a, you know, so, you know, talk to your friends or put a sign up in a local area that drummers who are wanted to come for the next big thunderstorm, obviously you have to pay attention to the weather, but if you randomly yeah. have 10 people that get together and drum in a thunderstorm, you get some amazing energies. And I actually did this in, in Cleveland, Ohio. And we would go out to Lake Erie whenever the thunderstorms would come in, which during the summer could be 20 or 30 thunderstorms a summer we could get. And we could get out there for eight or nine of them. And we would go out to the beach and the thunderstorm would come in and there could be up to 200 people drumming in this thunderstorm. Beautiful. I heard you speak about that on one of the yeah. shows. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. And that's something you can think about, you know, creating that thunder drumming group. It's not Beautiful. hippie thunder anymore. No, totally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was out, I was actually out walking in one of my kind of sacred jaunts with my my dog, and um, I'm almost certain I got hit by lightning, but it was like a very close call, and I just felt, I mean, I wouldn't even say it that way. I just felt like I was in communion with the thunder beings mm -hmm. in a profound way, but um, that, no, that's beautiful. I've been wondering how to... Um, Maybe you could say a little more about um, emerging into this uh, as myself, you know, as my soul self into this community, which is very relatively new for me. And I have not actually felt that I've truly entered into the community here. Um, I've been listening and doing a lot of work internally to understand what it is that I would actually, you know, bring into or enter into or what kind of space or sacred container to create to this gather is people together. Perfect point mm -hmm. to bring in Kathy of help to narrow and focus <laughs> right. what right. it is that you're actually creating. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Hi Janice. Hi Kathy. Great Where are you here. located again? I'm in New Mexico, in northern New Mexico. It's in the area of Taos, you know, which is right near the Taos Pueblo, and um, it's an ancient part. People have been living here for over a thousand years, and it's a really amazing place. It feels unusual, you know, mm -hmm. uh, many so what, people. What, what mm -hmm. would you say your goal is right now? <sighs> yeah, that's a great question, because I have, um, in terms of a goal, um, it's it's a orientation that I have related to only on the periphery because it's been goal. The word goal has been a little bit of a of a you know st not stumbling block, but I don't aim for goals, but I do internally and spiritually have a goal. If I'm so, can maybe you can guide me a little bit more about that me you know what you're actually asking okay i guess i'm asking with what you've just been talking about where do you want to go with this where not necessarily that you can visualize where it's going to go but where do you want to take it what i would love to do is be uh you know totally fluid being in a way that i can serve and uh you know, get out of my own way in the, you know, the smaller self, the limited self that has these ideas of who and what I am uh, in the world and that uh, I, in a sense, there's a part of me that still feels like the world is not ready for what I have to offer. And so there's, so it's just like, I'd love to get out of my way and be of service in the highest way that, or in the way that um, my spirit is, you know, here to, you know, be alive in a live stream of vitality and, and healing and like re this recapitulation that Andrew talked about and serve in that way, however I'm supposed to serve, whether it's directly mm. engaging other people and you know, assisting their recapitulation, or if it's, um, I've, I've actually been called in to do profound, some kind of healing in places. So I've gone to places and actually felt the whole recapitulation happening in my own being. So it's a mystery to me, actually, 
because mm. there's a sense of, oh, I should do this. You know, I've, I've been a practitioner of all different kinds at in this 3D, you know, in third density reality and for, third and fourth density reality. But there's something calling me that wants to show up a, in a more trans- transmutated form. Mm. So, so that's a, a whopper, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I guess I'm asking you these questions because when I look at your energy, it's just so scattered. Um, that's why I'm asking you about your goals because you've just, um, you know, you're like a kid in a candy store. You go in and, ooh, there's, you know, chocolate. Yes. Ooh, there's lollies. Ooh, 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 what's over there in the bottle over there? And ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's it's all good. Um, I don't mean it that it's too distracting, but – When you're doing all this, one of the things you really, for you anyway, you need to do is, of course, ground yourself, always going back to the grounding. But I want you to be in that grounded state and then look further. I know you said you don't really get into goals, uh, you know, let's say bigger goals or more long-term goals. But I would like you to try this little exercise for yourself in that why don't you think about what is my goal for three months from now and then six months from now. So you're not doing a lifetime goal. You're not, oh, I'm going to be X, Y, Z, you know, in three years' time and, you know, heal the world. Make it more simple. In three months' time, what do you see that you would like to achieve? And I would like you to be as specific as possible. So, for example, I'll make this up. Maybe you're thinking, well, you know, I really like the the area over in this small town over there. And I think there's a lot of healing that needs to go on, whether it's with the earth or the people there. So my goal is then to to find out as much as I can about this place, the inhabitants there, and what tools do I have, do I already have, that I can utilize to assist them in their growth, in their healing, in their moving forward. Okay? Okay. Because one of the reasons I want you to start doing this, number one, is for you, you need goals. They don't have to be your biggest goals, but you need to set yourself goals. You need to have milestones. Otherwise, you will go year in, year out and keep going. You will never stop. And there's nothing wrong with that, except you will start to feel a sense of, uh, where is all this going? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm never there. I don't even know where there is, but I'm never there. Right. And so your sense of achievement is not there. Right. So one of the things this will do is it's almost like giving you a purpose without sure. saying it's your life purpose, you know. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh-huh. Right. Um, but we have to start small so that when you can st- when you can see things like this and you can achieve things like this, then you can start to more truly understand what it is you're trying to do. Because you have so much information within you. You have so much talent. You have so much ability. You have so much healing to give. Mm-hmm. But what do you do with it? And only right. you can answer this question. And that will go with effort, trying, trial and error, results, and then seeing your own fulfillment as to that thing. So even if you have a goal, let's say go back to the example of heal this small town, the earth and the people in it, you might come out of it and think, you know, yeah, I did do that. And, you know, I spent a lot more time than I thought, but, you know, I don't feel super fulfilled. Then you already know that this is not going to be one of your big goals. So you can cross it off your list. Okay. Yeah. All right. In the meantime, you've done good stuff. But then sometimes there are certain people that have too much going on. So it's no use to say you have to decide on your big goals. It's easier to go from the other way and say, okay, let's look at all the small goals and we'll cross off the list what we don't want. Because the more you cross off, the more sure. you home in to the big goal. Sure. That's you know, great. It's, it's like going in the back door. It's a, it's yeah. A, it's a tricky way to trick yourself into <laughs> homing things in. But it's a process because you will be able to gauge it by your own sense of fulfillment over right. those little goals. Right. So that that's the first thing I'd like. So obviously in three to six, and six months, I'd like you to call back and let us know how that went. Okay. Um, because I'm going to talk about your bigger goals later in a more detail once we we start to do this process with you so okay. that you can clearer understand because even if you do two types, you will already knock off so much stuff on your list. You'll be amazed that you didn't think of this before. Right. Well, okay. already some of the things you said, 
that. I'm like, oh, it's amazing. I haven't thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's difficult when you're immersed in it, you know, and that's why people like I and Andrew exist and do this show. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm so grateful because, for you guys. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So when you are immersed in it, and remember, you think of yourself all the time. You're like a kid in a candy store. And that's the way you'll always be. And it's a beautiful aspect of you because you have that sense of wonderment that so many of us lose as we get older. But for you, you're always going to retain that. And that's one of the most endearing things about you. Mm. But for you now, you just have to start to learn a bit more focus. And so you can harness that and decide where it is that you want to go. Where I and Andrew think you're going to go is one thing, but you have to make certain choices yourself. Well, right? so we true. can guide you. Like if right. we told you, you'd be like, <laughs> Uh, no, that's it. No, totally, <laughs> totally. Right. Because you've got big things coming up for you. But it's all process, a step by step thing. Um, very exciting time to be you. Really, very, very, very exciting yes, time to be it you. It is, it is. Mm -hmm. And I, I would like you to focus more time as well on doing things with groups. Okay. Yes. So I want you to share information with people. So whether it's a you know, a support group of one type or even if it's just a social group or a group you know, like if you took macrame at the Y, there's a group of people there. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter what kind of group, but I want you to, to be part of a group where you have sharing of information. Not so much that you're teaching people, but they have access to what you're learning, right? right. Just yeah. in conversation. Because every time you explain it to someone, you will fine tune your wording as well and your own thought process. Because your mind is so expansive, it's difficult for you to... You know, like if I said to you, you know, yesterday, between the hours of one and five, what did you think about? <laughs> I guarantee you couldn't bullet point it for me because it's too much. <laughs> so what, what this being in a group situation will do for you is it will learn, it will teach you to summarize things so that other people can understand. But when you do that, you will yourself gain more clarity um, and maybe even certain things that you didn't realize you knew will come out. Right. So I'm not saying use people, but, you know, utilize. Yeah, yeah. There's one but, group that I meet with every month. It's um, actually a movement and group, but that has already been, um, it's already showing up like you're describing. So it's very beautiful. Yeah. Mm, mm, good. Good. We'll definitely make that commitment of time to share with that group and also help them understand things because there's sure. a lot of stuff you have to teach, which will be very helpful to them. Great. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then um, when I also look at your bigger goals and, you know, the things that you were talking about with Andrew, um, the stuff that's going on for you, think of it also like this. Sometimes you have to go through a lot of chaos, whether it's in the physical or in the mental or in the dream state, to be able to sort things out and then streamline it later. So in a way, what you're going through is a process. Sometimes yes. it's confusing because you don't know everything yet. But when you finally do know a lot more, things make more sense. Just trust in that it's a process that goes on. Great. No, thank you. Thank you. That's great. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, sometimes this is like a really long process. <laughs> but, I know. I know. But it we, is. Like, but Andrew's and I, you know, He's talking about billions of years, so I'm like, well, uh, what's you know, what's fifty years? <laughs> what's, 10, what's ten or fifteen years? You know, and and that that's the tricky nature of galactic history. It is what actually has resonance to you. Yes, yeah. There are many I, things that have resonance to you that would actually give you no benefit. Right. So when people come to ask for that galactic history, it is it is the true search for the source. And there are some people they think they want to know their galactic history. But ultimately, their soul really doesn't care. It's not about what you did in the past. It's the fact that you made it here. That's your greatest goal, soul goal. Right. Okay. Okay. Being here. You know, there are a trillion souls outside of this frequency of planet that, you know, in, in the proverbial sense, are jealous of us because <laughs> yeah, we made it that. here. <laughs> right. What, what really affirms for me is that in my own uh, kind of deepest, numinous listening within, I feel the reverberations of things that you spoke about. So, that, you know, to, that's very affirming uh, in a sense about my ever-present now practice of listening and drawing from source that it, I feel, 
you know, within myself, but have, have not had words to, you know, have not, it hasn't so-called broken through this reality until you, you know, until you so beautifully speak it. That was the choice to be a galactic historian, one who knows the colloquial language of the past, present, and future. Yeah, so that an I am being of the now can make a colloquial now representation that challenges their race amnesia. Yes, beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's a simplistically way to put it for, you know, in this reading, these reading type scenarios, you know, we have thousands of people that listen on YouTube and all the other sources that it goes on. And it's a, a unique opportunity to explain when one asks for galactic history and you, you wanted to know, I asked your soul, what, what did you need to know? Right. And all I had to do was query the Akashic record for the most important thing your soul had done. And right. for you, it was coming here. Yes. Okay. Yeah. What was before what was just the, the makeup of the frequency of light that you were. But there are other beings that were a specific person before they came here. Mm-hmm. You weren't a specific person. But you've spent, you know... 152 million years as a specific human person in in a reduction of density from seventh mm-hmm. density to the third density being that you are now it's like you know you know having a garage sale every year and you know selling half your stuff and half your stuff until you're reduced to almost you know nothing that's what i've done in the last <laughs> five years <laughs> yeah you spoke about the 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 tube of uh, I mean, it's, I, you know, it's more than just a tube of light, but this por- port, it's like a portal and that there's a decision to possibly close it. Um, yes. Is that, can you say a little bit more about that? I, I noticed I'm mm-hmm. during the break. I, 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 yeah. I, 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 I've never really talked about that before. I've known about these lineage tube projections and lines. It's what I used to understand the lineages that were created by founder beings who were going to invite billions of souls to come and live in these individuated tubes, which were individual frequencies of time Mm -hmm. that you had charted a course through with thousands of other beings saying, here are, here are free spaces, here are calm spaces, here are dangerous spaces. These are the chart, the charts and weather storms of time itself. Mm -hmm. Yes, totally. I have a very strong connection with time on multi levels. Yeah. And that time of chart, that time of charting the moods of time is over. Those old charts no yes. longer apply. So that so this could be closed closing, now. Closing yeah. the portal because anything else that's going to come in is going to change the density of your original creation. Mm. You've reached the end point of the original creation of protected tube. Now you, as the I am being that's been reduced, must recapitulate the responsibility of the original being who created a contract that would last over 150 million years. Mm -hmm. Mm Because that being saw you in existence, created you in existence, Mm -hmm. and it is you. Right. And you have access to that source incarnate now. It's just a matter of how the DNA technology and the light frequency being of you are going to agree to work it. And that's the (laughs) rules of reality. (laughs) Right. So I got one last question for you before we've got to go to our break and take our next okay. caller. What is the biggest, the one biggest thing you do to be in your own way? That's a great question. I've been contemplating that a lot. Let's see. I sense that it's something about limiting my own expression. Um, and and that means so many different things mm-hmm. um cuz expression is you know a multi dimensional thing or a multi faceted thing it's, expression <laughs> yeah yeah um, i'll label i'll label it for you to to limit this this because we have so little time self doubt okay. self doubt yeah so that self-doubt limitation is self doubt is what you're permeates saying permeates much yep. of your choices. Yes. That means that it's a subtle, influential frequency, much like the barometer rising or lowering determines how weather is going to change fast within you. Your level, your barometric level of self-doubt, when it's very low, allows all these things to come in until right. the storm of drama or internal change comes and the pressure goes up and then you can no longer you know, make your choices freely because the pressure of self-doubt is always there. Right, so it's impacting my free will, essentially. Uh, 
Well, actually, your very choices that your free will can choose from. Oh, okay, great. I see. It's limiting your potential. Yeah. So one of the things that will be important for you is to use your drumming frequency okay. to create the what I'm just simply going to call the heartbeat of Earth. You have okay. a drum beat, and then the Earth plays a drum beat. Sure. And then Thank after you. a while, you can create visions that create with it, where it has you and the fetus inside the womb listening yes. to the, your own heartbeat and the heartbeat of your mother. Totally. And from there, you can create a synco syncopated chorus of drum beats that reminds you of the infinite frequency of time. Beautiful. All right, Beautiful. Janice, we must let you go and go Thank on break. Thank you and so much. Yep. You're welcome. Yep. And when we come back, we will take the next caller. Great. Much love to you both. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And welcome back, everyone, to Adventures into Reality. We're at the top of the hour. Kathy, we had an amazing caller there. We did. Wow. The things that Janice brought up and that we learned from her was absolutely amazing. I mean, some of the stuff I just was, wow, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. you know, there are people out there that have dedicated their lives and in unawareness didn't realize they dedicated their lives to become very highly educated people that when they went through their spiritual awakening, they would have imprinted built-in skills to make great success for themselves. And she is one of those people coming through this awakening process, has all these skills she's practiced over the years, but never put them into a singular practice of an awakened being. Mm, mm. Yeah. I mean, for her, it, it, a lot is about making those small goals first to right. weed, weed it all out and then really focus and see where she wants to go. And she can singularize it for herself and identify with it. Hers, her I am being the one wanting to do all of these little individuated goals so they give her a clear line of victories and success. Mm, mm, very much so. So we're going to move on to the next caller via Skype. Keanu, are you there? Yes, how are you doing, Andrew? How are you doing, Kathy? It's a pleasure to be on your show. Great. Where are you calling from today? I'm calling from Kelowna, BC, actually. Oh, welcome to the show. So what kind of? how did you find out about us? One of my uh, really good friends uh, told me about you, and then we used to listen to you guys together. And that's how I found out about you guys, and everything resonated. Very cool. So you know how this works. You have the Akashic Record of this world and 20,000 other worlds open to you. What kind of questions do you want to ask first? Um, Andrew, the first question I'm going to ask you is my galactic history, um, so I can find out more about what I'm doing right now, because I feel kind of stuck. Okay. What year were you born? Um, 1978. All right, so like with the last caller, I'm going to go back to the last set of lives you lived and work backwards. 1931, 1930, 1917, 1916. Ooh, 1818 is the last time you had a life. So you spent 100, 202 years not living on the surface of this world. So the last 200 years of modern history, you have been living in the astral world in an astral city known as Lokatora. Uh, Locatora is a, a unique city. It is what builds other astral roadways. Think of paving trucks that have a of a of a place that they go to, and all the workers, you know. Yeah. So you were literally building astral roadways between other celestial minds and other celestial cities that are just out of the frequency of human color and light. So you have been an astral builder for the last two hundred and two years. So. You are here this lifetime to be a physical builder into the astral worlds. You're going to be converting objects of prayer and altars of prayer space and sacred spaces of ancient forests into portals and doorways that lead into the astral worlds of hyper-creation, higher frequency of light, um, stuff like that. So as I go back more than 200 years, the last lifetime you led before you are you would have been in... 1719, yeah, you would have lived right about 117 years old. So at that era, living that long was super, super unusual. So you were living in Germany at that period of time, and you were part of, I'm not going to say the family because it makes no difference. Also. So yeah. one of the, li the lizard lineage families. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and you lived 117 years, and during that time you created a dynasty 
of wealth and power. And when you were nearing the end of your life, um, one of the your handmaidens that you had when you were younger came to you and said that you had children and you wanted to meet these children before you were to pass on to see if they were worthy enough to be taken up by the lizard lineage and brought in as a breeder group. For that at that time, that was not an evil thing to do, but you know we look at it with different eyes. When one of these children was brought in front of you, the esoteric practitioner inside them saw him very self. The very being that was going to die in just a handful of weeks had already been reborn in this child who was seven years old in front of him. Wow. Well. This was a very profound moment for you, and it's what made you have a life review that rejected all of your lizard lineage as a continuing process of going forward. You then spent your next 202 years in the astral world fixing all the negative lines that you created so that you could be born this lifetime now free of karma other than what your two hands, your two feet, and your own penis created this lifetime. Yeah. Okay. So you're not coming in with any karma other than what you've created this lifetime. As I go further and further and further back, there are a long lineage of dynastic living personalities who was a king, a queen, a general, an admiral, so on and so forth, all the way to 2900 years ago, 2900 BC. So you had been a long line of warriors, kings practitioners of the esoteric order 2900 years ago is where you began that process before you began the warrior process you were a simpleton who lived upon the land as a shamanic personality who understood that grass could be boiled down and could feed thousands of people certain plants in the community can trigger mystical experiences and you openly shared this information and you lived in the Polynesian area and you spoke Polynosia, which is a one step away from being telepathic light language. It was the surviving of the Lemurian language that was taught in the Polynesian expressions. You helped build many of the Polynesian ancient megalithic buildings. You built many of the Moai, your individuated self. So... You, I go further back, I go 150,000 years ago. And this is where your soul has been running the divinity path and doing the most that it can do. But it had already understood that the great process into the ancient future, where the race memory would, would truly be challenged with amnesia, you understood that your ancient future self, this Kano of now, would exist. And you had to go deep into your ancient past to create a deeper foundation so that the Keanu that was awakening this time would not only see the lizard lineage of the last 4,000 years, but see the great lineages that existed before that. Ones that you helped create or bring out of feralness. Because that is something else in your galactic history. Before you came to Earth, you were the tamer of feral species. Well... Okay, think of that, tamer of a feral species. And that is not a negative connotation. I combine those words in this moment because there's not just you listening. There's thousands of others who have also had to tame a feral species. Sometimes they ignited the passion of the feral species by doing something innocent as much as flying around in their atmosphere. And you had to go down and justify for whatever was feral reaction was doing. And not represent yourself as gods. Wow. So your biggest goal this lifetime is don't represent yourself as a god. Be the authentic I am being of the now. Who knows that you live, breathe, fart, and ha just like everyone else. <laughs> no. But your great power is knowing that you aren't going to forget anymore. And that there will no longer be I'll see you the next lifetime. Or I might not see you the next lifetime. This is the lifetime where you begin to gather the collection of the great many beings you've been in the past, amalgamate them into the Keanu of the now without losing yourself to any one of them, and allow your authentic self to step into the human stage of life and pick up yourself, figure out the career that you want to do, and get out there and start changing the world. Wow, that's amazing. So what do you do for a job now? Um, 
what I do, I'm actually starting a company that is uh, that goes and find inspiring stories of people and also do branding, filming, and marketing for companies that are helping people, actually, or people that are helping people. So I do mostly videos and things like that. You ever seen yourself being the one being videoed? Um, sometimes. Sometimes it feels like that. that I know these people that I'm filming. It's... Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's a part of you that's got to see the stage, the stage of presentation, whether it's talking about the technology you already know and, and you know, pitching a sale or using it for the next level of teaching, you know, having a private group that you would teach to and you record it, turn it into a product in the future, whatever, whatever it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I want to bring Kathy in here now to help ground out some of these great lessons that have been that have been brought here and help focus some of your goals. Thank you, Andrew. Hi, Kanal. Is that how you Hi. say it? It's Keanu. Keanu, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very unusual name. Yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> you know, I look at your energy and there's just so much going on. I see there's so much on the periphery that's very, very exciting. When you said that you were starting up a new business, so you're looking for inspiring stories, is can I ask you where do you find these people? Sometimes they come to me, or sometimes I go find them. And mm. what I do, I just take the stories and I put it out there for free. Or if there's a shaman that wants to share a teaching, I just video it and put it up for free. That's the free part of the what I do. So how how do you find these people? Um, for example, I was sitting a couple of days ago. Uh, I went to get some f uh, food at a restaurant, and then there was no tables available, and there was some guy sitting. Alone, I'm like, can I sit here? And I sat in front of him, and we had so much in common, and yet such a beautiful, life-changing story that I wanted to, you know, film and share in the future. So sometimes they come like this, or sometimes I go to them. Mm, okay, I'm asking this question because to me, this looks like a great concept for you. Something that you could really branch out, you know, in a vast way. I suppose I'll say. But to me, it looks like you have a hesitancy about this project. Is it that you don't really feel that you want to monetize it so much? You just want to do it like a public service? Um, half of it is going to be public service, which is all the shows. The other half of it is going to be documentaries like for companies that are doing these things. And I will charge the companies for the graphic design, for the branding, and for the video. Mm. Uh, but when the ones with the companies, is that that is not the same as the inspiring stories? That is uh, different projects, is it? It would be uh, mostly the stories of their companies. So if it's a, I only work with companies that are making a difference. I won't work with uh, companies that are not doing anything good for us. So, Okay. Well, what I mean, I think, uh, how can I put this, uh, is the work that you're doing, which is the inspiring stories that you're at the moment, you're doing it f just to help people and for your own interest. To me, that part of what you're doing, you can really expand it. You can make this very big. But to me, it looks like you want to keep this as a public service to help people, to assist with everyone's, um, I guess, knowledge and growth and um, getting the information out there, as opposed to wanting to monetize on it and develop yeah. this so that you can get some income. Would that yeah. be correct? Yeah, you're correct. Okay. What I would like you to consider is... This is something you can monetize, um, and not because you have to, uh, or um, it, <laughs> I'm not really even sure how to put this uh, in words, because uh, I can see exactly how you're thinking about this. Um, think of it more like this. You have a lot of stories, and the reason that you're doing this is like a goodwill ambassador. Let's call it like that. Yeah. And you want to get the information out for people so that they can see these inspiring stories and be inspired and learn things. On the other side, you also want to help these people get their message out and um, get more well-known so that they can go further if they are in that kind of industries. Yeah. One of the things that you really should consider is this is a great business model. This is something that you can do yourself, can help people that you actually do the stories of and can help people get that information out and have access to these people. If you want to do something where, let's call it, it's a more membership-based thing, 
where you can, and I'm just going to make this up now because I'm not as inventive and creative as you, but let's say you put all this you're, you're stuff amazing. on a website. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to take that compliment. <laughs> um, if you can imagine you, you have a website, right? You've got all that information there and then you do the stories. Once you put the story out, then let's say after a month, you move it into your membership area and then you just leave a small cutting there, you know, a bit like newspaper articles, you know, so you leave it there. And so over time, people can access all the, the summary of these stories. But if they want to have the full um, access to all your old stories, everything that you're thinking, everything that you're doing, you know, they have to pay like, I don't know, five US dollars a month or whatever it is for you. But by doing this, you will actually organize your thoughts about what you want to do with this. You will make enough money so that you can have pocket money and this isn't um, a time constraint problem for you when you get more stories. And also, you give those people they are doing stories on credence over time because people that go into your site will look specifically inside those categories for things like this. Just, did I explain that well? Yeah, you explained it perfectly. I know exactly what you're talking about. It's a really good idea. I really, I really like that, actually. Yeah, I think that is where you really should start to aim for. I mean, it will take you a long time. By long time, I'd say if, if you worked on this every week and think about it, it'll take you about a year to get everything all organized and the way you want to do it and still give people a lot of the free current information and the tidbits from the old stuff. But all your older content will go in there. And, you know, it's almost like you're archiving it but in a very systematic and easy way for people to access. Because when you do this, people will actually appreciate the fact that they're like um, first in on all this information. They're the first to the story. They get all the good the good stuff. And if they want to contact that person, they have to go in there and do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it generates stickiness to your own site. And you can financially gain from it. And gives credence to all the inspiring stories. And the membership are very happy because they feel that this is like a, a niche, a clique, you know. They're part of something, a movement that is important. Oh, yeah, Which exactly. is. Yeah. It is totally true. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make a difference. <laughs> yeah, and it will. It will. But this is something that you can use to springboard other projects that you want to do. I mean, I know you say you the other part of your business is you work for companies that you – well, I don't want to use the word approve of, but that you support or that you can get on board with their ideology yeah. um, and help them with branding and marketing. But at the end of the day, this is still you working for other people. Yeah, okay? you're right. And it, it's not a regular business. You know, this kind of freelance work, you know, if you wanted to go on holiday, let's say, to Italy in six months' time, you're not sure you can generate that much income. Yeah. To have spare and this and that and do everything. Whereas if you have something that you're doing for yourself, for your own pleasure, and it's providing you a regular income, the world is your oyster. I mean, maybe you're not going to go first class all the way around the world. <laughs> <laughs> but you certainly get to Italy and have a wonderful time for several months and then yeah. come back and do your stuff because you don't have that time constraint. Because for yeah. you, you can do this anywhere in the world as long as you have the internet, you're hooked up. Are you right? No, that's amazing. Oh, wow. I'm so excited now. It's like you should be. It's a exciting time. I see it all on your periphery. It's just all popping around. You know, it's like these ideas are like whoa, whoa, whoa that be floating around, and you're sort of like, oh no, I don't have time to think about this. But it's like it's here. The time, the time of reckoning and recognition is now. <laughs> <laughs> you have to start thinking. Everything is not just for other people. Some of it is for you too. And by having some of it for you, it enables you to help others more and to travel more to be able to touch other people because, you know, you do have financial restrictions. Imagine it more in a way for your brain to comprehend in a more happy way is that you're funding you going around the world so that you can do this and bring this information back to everyone. Because when I look at you and the issue of money and finance, you have a little bit of a hurdle to jump over with that. It's not all about mm, give, and, give, take, earn, um, you know, money is bad and 
we can already, you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what you mean. You yeah. have to kind of a little bit think of it in a different way. Like money in in some ways, okay, it, it's, it's this, you do become a slave to the dollar. I mean, we all are to a certain degree because you need yeah. it to survive, to do things, to even put petrol in your car, etc. But you can also look at it in a different way. It's like this enables you to be able to go out, reach people, touch them, change their lives. I mean, and introduce them to a global audience that they would never, ever know. I mean, imagine we're sitting here. I mean, you're in, where is it? In uh, cool. BC, yep. right? You're sitting there. You have found someone in a coffee shop that no one would know. But because you couldn't get a seat, you sat down with them. And now somebody in Spain, somebody in Thailand is going to learn about what they do, their story, and what talents and abilities they have, and maybe want to contact them. I mean, you know, doesn't that yeah. not blow your mind? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if you could do that for at least three to ten people every week, and it kept continuously happening for them all the time. I mean, would you not rock their world, right? Is that oh, not yeah. helping someone? But you need the wonderful little cashola to fund yeah, it. I heard right? that robbing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I was rubbing my hands. <laughs> yeah, you were, were. <laughs> I'm just thinking, you know, you have to ka ching ka ching to get that ticket and pay for the hotel yeah. room and you know. But it's it's a sort of a lifestyle that you could totally get on board with. I think you would gain so much. The people that you could meet that that could meet you and could have access to global reaches is just absolutely amazing it is so worth it please please take it more seriously and start planning <laughs> okay, i will do that <laughs> <laughs> number one that means write it down yeah, i can I see already you're not good at this so i want you to go yeah. and buy a notepad just for this project and only write things that are related to that project in this notepad when you look at that notepad every week, sometimes you will have written half a page. I'll just call, hold on and we'll come yep. back to you after these messages. Thank You're you. Welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone, to Adventures into Reality with myself, Kathy Ma, and the amazing Andrew Bartzis. And for those of you who don't know, Andrew is offering a free video series called Living the Mystical Life Daily. He shows you some tools and gives you knowledge about how to have mystical experiences in your everyday life. So sign up for free at andrewbartzis.com. Just put your name and email when you get to the page and you'll receive the first video right away. Again, just get it at andrewbartzis.com and enter your name and email to receive the Living the Mystical Life daily series. And remember, you can get a private session with Andrew or myself by contacting Tanok at tanok at galactichistorian.com. That's T-E-N-O-C-H at galactichistorian.com. And we'll be able to get to the bottom of your issues and help you see a better way ahead. And for those of you who, have, who would like to learn a bit more about me, you can check out my website, which is kathyspearlsofwisdom.com. And that's Kathy with a K. So, Kanao, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Great. Um, before we continue, I'd just like to ask you, I see in the chat room people would like to know, is there a link to your stories on the Internet? Um, if you go on YouTube and you Google Uniters Media, you can find all the videos on there. The website, I'm just finishing it up right now, too. So, what is that? United? No, Uniters Media. U N I T E R S and then M E D I A. I can punch it into the chat room if you want. Oh, yes, that would be great because uh, we have some queries. So, it's unitersmedia.com. Yeah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Already you're stretching around the globe. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're also looking at things in terms of career and advancement, I see that you have another plan. Do you have another project in mind? 
Um, I do like I do arts and paintings and exhibitions, and I do like sacred geometry art, which I don't even know where they come from. So I paint those on huge uh, like canvases. The other part is I want to like bring people together with my art projects. So that's the second thing that I do. Oh wow, you're so creative! And where do you show these pieces at the moment? Um, sometimes they go in the gallery, but for the last three years, everything has been stopped. So all my paintings are just in the crates, and I haven't even created another painting which I really want to create um, but you know I haven't had time when you say it stopped why why is that is it that you just stopped or where you were hanging them before just ended uh, I went to university and then just you know things got slowed down with that so then I studied mm. yeah so I guess you can already with your psychic sense tell where I'm going with this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You are a psychic. I'm just a regular joke. Well, I'm leading you down the garden path right now. It's time to revive some of this because I see that it will be very popular and very healing for people. Even though you don't know where all this sacred geometry is coming from, you have to trust in yourself and trust where it's coming from because what you have to show people can really help with their overall healing. I mean, looking at those pictures, I can see already just that feeling of peace that people get from it is worth it. Even if your pictures only touch one person, it's worth it. So I know you really don't have a lot of time, but see, maybe you could look at your schedule. I mean, number one, you'd actually have to write a schedule. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed everything. to your haphazard way that you do things now. <laughs> but let's assume that you do write a, a brief schedule <clears throat> and you're starting to be a bit more focused on branching into these things. Why don't you allocate two days a month just to think about your art? Even if you don't put paintbrush to canvas or pen to paper, at least allocate some time so you can think about it, so you can let those creative juices come back. Um, because I think you'll find that not only is it great for other people to look at, but it is its own sense of or own type of healing for yourself to let things come out so that you can actually be that expressiveness. You don't have to know what it means. All you have to know is the joy that you feel when you paint them. I love it when I paint them. Mm -hmm. Oh, in there, is there something else you would like to ask us? Um, I want to find, like, I'm looking for somebody like myself as a, a partner. And what do I do to get to set that up? Hmm. Now, that is a very tricky question because when I look at everything around you, I don't see that there is anyone suitable at this point in time. For you to find a partner, it would have to be next year. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. And all you need to do is put out some feelers, like a word of mouth kind of feelers, you know? Yeah. Um, the right person has a lot of feminine energy. And I know this doesn't mean a lot to you right now, but when you encounter this person, you'll totally understand what I mean. There would be no mistaking that feminine energy. Oh. Hmm. Totally worth it. Mm. Yeah. So definitely <laughs> just, just focus on what you're doing now and just trust. Even if you didn't speak to us about this, it would come up. You just by your natural way of doing things, this would happen. There isn't anything that you can do or not do that will make it happen faster or make it not happen. It's just going to happen. Okay. That sounds good. Well, great. Well, thank you so much for calling in. It's been really, really great talking to you. Yes, I'm here. It was a pleasure. And if you guys need any help from me, I'm always available. So. Excellent. Well, I'm definitely going to check out your site. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be up in a couple of days. All right. Okay. And, and from the chat room, you already got someone that subscribed to your YouTube channel. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> See, you're already doing yeah. it. You're moving yeah. on up. There you go. Moving and shaking. <laughs> well done. Much. All right, brother. You have a good day. Yeah, same thing. Nice talking to you guys. Thank you. Special calls, Kathy. Special calls. I know. I know. Each caller is always so interesting. Absolutely so interesting. So we're going to move on to our last caller today. We've got a shortened period of time. Lisa, are you there via Skype? 
Lisa, are you there? You may have to unmute, Lisa. Lisa's having all sorts of challenges getting through to us today. You can I, do it, Lisa. You can. We do. believe in you. We've seen you keep coming back. Come on. <laughs> we see the connection. Now you have to unmute. You have to go down to the bottom of the screen and where you see the microphone, there's a, a line across it. You must click that and take the line off. <laughs> oh, no. Poor Lisa. Ah, uh, <laughs> that was a <laughs> oh, modern technology. You don't know whether you love it or hate it sometimes. Exactly. It makes us so able to communicate with each other, yet at the same time, simplistic things like this go on. Oh, I know. <laughs> Are you there, Lisa? Why don't you try and unmute? Mm. Maybe she went to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> the one moment she comes on, she's been waiting for so long. <laughs> oh. So for, for people that are in the background that are listening, so Laura Lee is our, our producer and she is amazing at it. And there are times that the flood of calls are just, you know, nonstop for her. And there are other times they trickle in here and there. This is one of those days where Lisa was like one of the second or third callers. And, you know, we had the other callers all lined up and she's there waiting. I know. Poor Lisa. She, Any, she's still there. <laughs> uh, all right. We have our next caller, 330. Your name and where you're calling from? Lisa from Ohio. Hi, Lisa from Ohio. How are you doing today? Hi. I'm very excited to speak with you. Oh, my God. Were you the, other, you? Lisa on, were you the other Lisa on Skype? No. Oh, <laughs> two Lisas. Oh, that oh, look at that. That's a synchronicity <laughs> replaced with another Lisa. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of questions do you want to ask today? Um, I'm just super interested in my galactic history. Okay. How did you find out about me? <laughs> um, through Teal Swan, actually. Um, I saw an interview with her and you on YouTube. And how did, how did, what did you think of that interview? I was amazed by what you were saying, and I've been amazed ever since. <laughs> okay. So you want to know about galactic history. What year were you born? Uh, 1983. 1983. All right. Let me tune, tune back. Mm -hmm. So the last lifetime you lived before you came in was 1981. So you came okay. in as a baby. You were born in Italy to a mother, um, and the mother died at childbirth the father died at a car accident and oh, you wow. were an orphan at age two and you walked out of your body and something else walked into it and i haven't seen this in a really long time that was the oh, lifetime wow. before this one not not this lifetime that was mm -hmm. the lifetime before this one i'm gonna go further back i'm gonna go See, before that, the last lifetime you lived and died, 1913 to 1955. So 1913 to 1955 was your next set of lifetimes. So you spent a good 30 years in the astral world before you came back in and you had that life, which was a no-go. And you're like, all right, a year later, I'm going to come back. <laughs> and you got the right okay. life. So this lifetime is a significant expression that will help you understand the bigger concepts of your galactic history because this is the lifetime you had thousands and thousands and thousands of different forms of UFO connections. So in 1913 is when you were born, um, and right away you were an unusual child. Uh, you were living in southern Kentucky at that moment in time in the United States. Um, you began to, at a very early age, shine an inner light that the religious people of that area called the power of the Lord. Um, and by the time you were 10 years old, you were going from county to county to county, blessing people as part of the good work of the religion of that time. By the time you reached your early 20s, you began to understand the corruptive power that was in and around everywhere that was around you. And also the corruptive power that was trying to lure you into an esoteric practice that wasn't your natural form of light. As you began advancing in your life and you reached your, 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 your 30s, and, you know, and at that time the world was in depression, anger and violence was everywhere, people were starving, 
And you began this process. Do I take on the Christ consciousness or do I create something that is far, far greatly different than that? Um, many, many practitioners of light have recreated their own expression of Christ consciousness during their individuated time that they've lived in certain frequencies of life experiences. And you chose not to, not to emulate the Christ consciousness, but to go beyond its emulation and recreate a new source. Um, you left Kentucky, you left the religious organizations behind there, and they tracked you until you ended up in the San Joaquin Valley in, in California. And there you had taken up refuge, and I'm, I'm not finding the right word, with a, a, a group of Native Americans that were in the San Joaquin <laughs> Valley. Um, there you converted your religion, and there were religious hunters that were trying to bring you back because you were able to heal people of their physical wounds that were returning from World War One and World War Two. I'm going into a little area that I can't talk about. All right. So that lifetime was very important for you because it set up the exoteric practitioner and the healer within yourself. Before that lifetime, we're going to go back to 2,600 years ago, whereas you ended your war lifetimes and began your process of re reintroducing yourself to soul shards that are lost in time. So the last 2,000 years have been about healing yourself enough so you could have powerful lifetimes that create a f potential future. So this Lisa, who is an esoteric understander, practitioner, awakened being, would have a foundation to work with. On a more deeper galactic history level here, you're looking at yourself as being a foundational creator, one that has the knowledge and will wisdom of healing tools and techniques, who is willing to go on spiritual journeys to help heal another soul who has lost soul shards. Um, that's called soul shard recovery, um, psychic surgery. Those are all things that your previous galactic history would say that you've done. When we go 13 million years ago, I think this is the most significant lifetime that will help you create a new form of spiritual surgery for yourself that's going through an awakening and your future self who's going to need a hard, a very deep resonating form of inspiration so that when the reality pushes back against you saying, no, don't go that far into the mystical life, you will, you will, you will never once again have the normal, that is where you must put the pedal to the metal and drive deeply into the mystical, teaching yourself, not through gurus, not through teachers, but teaching yourself the mystical experiences by having them, manifesting, doing the teachings that you've learned in the previous generations and allowing new forms of self-training to come through. Okay. Oh, that's a lot to take in. <laughs> yes. So you want to know who you were before you came here to Earth? Is that the big thing you wanted to ask? Um, sure. I... You, you, were you, you were Pleiadian. Okay. Um, again, when I read people's Galactus, you know, letting in the, in the little secrets of what, a, what an Akashic record reader is, I'm looking for what resonates the most to the individuated you who can take something <laughs> to the future. And there are people that ask the question because, you know, that's the tradition on the show. What's the galactic mm -hmm. history? Mm -hmm. You're one of the people. Your galactic <laughs> history really isn't about you, the individual, what you've done in the mm -hmm. past. You made it here, much like the other caller. That's your big victory. Okay. What are you going to do with it now? That's your choice. Okay. And you're here in the now, and I want to bring Kathy in here in these last couple minutes that are left to really talk about motivating you, taking the skills and jobs that you have now, and begin to transit your life into more of a healing personality, a hands-on healer. Okay. Hi, Lisa. Uh, hi, Kathy. Can I ask you what you do at the moment? I'm sorry, what? What do you do at the moment? Oh, I'm unemployed. All right. What have you been doing before this um, state? <laughs> laboratory work. I was quality control for an asphalt company, and I was testing drinking water before that. Mm, okay. Well, that it sort of explains it. Would you f say that what you did before was mm, a bit mundane for you? Oh, yes. Despised okay. it. <laughs> that's okay. That's what I went to school for, so that's what I felt I needed to do. Mm -hmm. When I look at your energy, to me it looks like whatever you <laughs> have been doing, um, it's just, mm, sorry, I can't think of the technical word. Let's just call it blah. It's very blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> 
um, you know, for you to, to I uh, guess, what is the word, to maintain your interest, it has to be very fluid. It has to be um, moving. I mean, I can understand how you sort of morphed into this because you like the creating, you like the, the mixing, you like the um, mm -hmm. exploring of all the little parts, etc., and seeing what it makes. But unfortunately, you know, what you fell into was a bit more mundane, let's call it. Um, and that creative side and that excitement part of you just wasn't there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to suggest a few <laughs> things for you that when I look at your energy, I think you'd be wonderful at. Um, I think okay. they're probably things that you haven't really thought about and you're going to think a bit way out there. But I'm just going to shoot them out there so you can think about it think later. About it. Okay. All right. You are very good at creating. Okay, you have an incredible um, innate feel for things. You need to think about things like making products, like um, herbal medicines, um, uh, oils, ointments, um, face cream, skin cream, all that, all that range of things, because you will instinctively know what to put together with what and what to put it in to make it into something. It's completely mm -hmm. something that you haven't done or have you know, not really considered before. Um, and in a way, you might consider it a little bit foo-foo and out there. But... It sounds exciting. When, sorry? It sounds exciting. Well, it is. It is. I mean, I'm excited. I'm like tense in my chair. Going, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but because you just have that affinity with, with all these herbs, with all these oils, with all these, let's just call them raw materials... It, it's it's almost like you're you know like the the crazy wizard putting everything together in your cauldron and mixing it up, and then deciding your biggest decision will be what color is the label going to be, <laughs> mm -hmm. what, what will you call it? <laughs> um, but I'm going to leave that thought with you because this is something that okay. if you start to think about it today, it would take you at least six months to get a really clear idea of where you want to start. And when I say it takes you six months, so if you start today and you start writing down all your ideas and the things that are jumping at out to you, then, you know, a few weeks down the line, I think, oh, no, but they don't mix well together. And, and what I'm going to use as a carrier oil and this and that. So by the time you, you're throwing all your ideas around and sorting it through, sifting through it, and then finally thinking, you know what, I've got 12 things I'm going to do and I'm just going to do it, right? And think of it more like, you want to do this like a, a mom and pop time thing. You do it in your kitchen. You do it at home. You you can even use like um, it doesn't have to be fancy jars. It can be you know jam jars that you've had, spaghetti jars that you've had. It doesn't matter. What matters is that this product gets out to people because your word of mouth will be very strong. And once that happens for you, you can actually completely see where this is going. Awesome. Okay, okay. So I love it. I absolutely it. love it. Yes, and when yeah, you do it, you must too. you must let us know. <laughs> I will. I will for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. Because that sounds very I'm exciting. Sure, I'm sure I want a jar of something. I don't know what it is awesome. yet, but it, <laughs> that's going to be something <laughs> I want. <laughs> awesome. All right, oh, and in God. the short term, when I look at what's going on for you, I think you know at the moment there isn't a lot of great opportunity around you. OK, so it really makes no difference over the next few months what you do, whether you take some mundane, you know, um, white collar job just to, you know, get some income or you go and work on a hippie commune or if you go and, um, you know, wash dishes at a restaurant. None of it matters. In your big picture, it doesn't matter. It's about what suits you, your time frame and what you enjoy. So th okay. that's all you really need to think about at the moment. Um, when you come up to about four months time from now, you will find that there's a very, very interesting proposal that gets put your way. Um, whether, so, whether it's a job in a newspaper and someone shows it to you or someone approaches you, I, I couldn't be sure. But this proposal really does challenge you because it makes you think a little bit out of the box, not totally out of the box, but it's almost like you, you turn left and, and walk outside the box on the left hand side. Because some of it is like, what? And the rest of it is, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> but that will be the very interesting time for you because it, it will come 
to you at a time where you're thinking creativity, you're thinking new, ingenious things, and you're not sure if you want to make that commitment. What I'd say to you is this kind of thing that's being offered to you, you could say to them, I'd, I'd like to try it for three months, not because I don't believe in what you're doing, but I'm not sure if we're a perfect fit, if we're a good match. Um, and see what they say because I guarantee you they would say yes yes please come please come <laughs> but at the same time for you it's not a big commitment okay all right yeah it's so really it's exciting cool. times yeah today is today's full of excitement it really is <laughs> I'm glad to hear that things have been a little stagnant for a little bit so that's welcome news for sure <laughs> You know, sometimes it is like that, but you have to, in your case, when I look at what's been going on for you, I think you probably did need a time of stagnation for you to fully appreciate something new that's coming and be more um, open to trying, more keen to jump than if you'd just come mm -hmm. out of something and you hadn't had that sort of boring time in the middle. Mm -hmm. Because it, yeah, in your, yeah, inside you, you're kind of like a a more reserved person you're not so, i'd say people look at you and they wouldn't say oh yeah she does all sorts of crazy things all the time no <laughs> you, you're like more <laughs> you know I, I that that's way out of my favorite reference i don't think so you know so so what's coming up for you is really kind of way out there so it's a good time because you've had this time to think you know this isn't working for me <laughs> i'm going to have to be you know unpredictable <laughs> okay yeah I'll try on. <laughs> yeah it, okay. it, it is going to be a lot of fun and when you look inventing all these things and you're mixing it all up always think about this who is it that you know that you think this would suit because if you can personalize it to a certain person mm -hmm. it will naturally evolve in a good way so i'll just make it up imagine you are making um, anti-acne cream for your niece but at the same time, you know she's got super sensitive skin and can't take certain things. So mm -hmm. you would, even though you, your instinct is to put them in, you would take them out because you're thinking of her. Okay. Whatever the rationale is for you when you invent these things, that will be right. So mm -hmm. if you personalize every little invention that you make, it will just by natural default work out. Wonderful. That makes sense. Mm. Okay. Well, thank you so much for calling, Lisa. It was great yes, that you could you get guys. through. I know. Alrighty.